Now in this session we talk about the derivative control and then discuss the PID control. Now we have talked about the on-off controller, we have talked about the proportional controller, we have talked about the integral controller. Now in all of these we identified different issues and we talked about that okay how to overcome some of the issues but still we have seen that there are issues remaining with some of the components. For example, the proportional controller had offset issues and then we said that by using the integral controller, the offset issues can be eliminated. Now we have also seen that for the integral controller, there are issues with oscillation and wind up. So in general, what we have here when we are talking about controller or control method, the question we ask is how to manipulate the input. Now the proportional control is based on the current value of the error signal and the integral control is the integral of the error signal. Now neither the proportional controller nor the integral controller considers the rate of change in the error. Now, Common sense suggests that if the error changes faster or another case the error changes slower, in that case the control action cannot be the same. Meaning the rate of change of error should have an effect on deciding the control action. So this gives rise to the concept of what is called this derivative control. Now, as I understand that the proportional control has its, its own advantage, the integral control has its own advantage. So what we want to do, we want to keep the advantages of this proportional and integral as well. So in together, we use the what is called this proportional integral derivative controller. So all this together gives rise to the concept of what is called this PID controller. So for the PID controller, the control action is the summation of this bias term, which is always there, the proportional term, the integral term, and the derivative term. Okay. So we have seen the proportional part and the integral part. For the derivative term, we use this term tau d, which is called this derivative time. Also, it has the unit of time. So it's always positive. Also, this large values of tau d increases the influence of the derivative term. So we have seen for the integral action, as the value of tau i increases because it's in the denominator, the effect of this integral action decreases. But for this derivative time, time as it's in the numerator, the control action increases with the increase of the derivative time. Now, what are the effect of this derivative control action. Now, when you measure the slope, you are really trying to predict which way the variable is moving. In this sense, the derivative control, it's also called this anticipatory control. And by considering the rate of change of the error, the derivative control can reduce the oscillation in the output. So we'll see how. So let's look at this response of a process under PI control and PID control. So for this case, we see that under this PI control, the output was oscillating and so the input variable, okay? And for the same proportional and integral uh, parameters, when I use the PID controller, meaning at the derivative part, the oscillation reduces to a great extent. And we see that the oscillation also in the input variability changes significantly. Now, how it happens? How does the derivative of control reduces the oscillation? Now, if we look at this response curve, this is under PID controller. So, what happens if you look at the response here, the slope changes. 
so this is the plot against set point and the output so this is the output not the error however we we'll see that this error of the derivative of the error is nothing but the negative of the derivative of this output signal so we see that for this case the derivative of the error changes sign okay now we see why does this process oscillates under integral control now integral control what it does it keeps on adding control action because it's summing up all the error term here okay now the integral action keeps on increasing although the process is reaching towards the set point now if we look at the rate of change of this y signal is really decreasing here okay and for this case you see that the when the dy by dt is positive the derivative contribution what would decrease the ut so for say up to this point what's happening that the integral action is keep on summing up however the derivative action is decreasing the control action now after this point the integral action also decreasing and in this case because it has gone beyond the set point value the area is negative integral action is changing means it's decreasing the same time the derivative action is also decreasing here in this part now the slope is zero at this point and after that the slope also changes the sign now the integral action keep on decreasing for this case because this area is negative for integration it's negative here so integral action keep it keep on changing now, why does the process oscillate because it has gone beyond this set point value and now it's coming back and the integral action is keep on decreasing to the extent that it will go again beyond the set point value but in the other direction now when you have this derivative action for this part being negative okay for negative slope and there is a negative sign here so it's really in this part the derivative action is adding to the control action okay so you see that for this case the integral action for this part the integral action is increasing the derivative action is decreasing for this part both the integral and derivative action is decreasing for this part integral action is decreasing but the derivative action is increasing so that it doesn't go beyond the set point in the other direction so thus the derivative action reduces the oscillation in the process variable okay now derivative action has its own problem though first problem is the what is called this derivative kick okay now if you look at this diagram here that at the point when the set point changed the output was at its value here now if you plot the difference between this set point and the output being the error signal you see the error signal is at this point the error signal is this much now if we take the derivative of this signal it really will be very large or infinity for this case for an ideal case this will be an infinity value because the derivative action suddenly changed by a very large value okay so what this causes is that at this point due to this large derivative action there is a kick in the control action meaning there is a very large value so from physical perspective when what we see from there that due to this derivative action if the valve was at certain value it will either completely open or completely close but very fast okay and that causes like the mechanical wear and tear in the control valve okay so that's what is called this derivative kick so again the derivative kick takes place because when the set point changes there is a very large change in the error so if you take the derivative of that very large change then you will have a very large value of control action and that's called this derivative kick which is undesirable now how to avoid this derivative kick now you see that this this is the set point this is the 
output value. Now, if you plot, you know, plot the difference between these two, you get this error signal. Okay. Now, you see that this error signal is nothing but the mirror image of the output signal. So, mathematically, what you can see here again that DET over DT is a negative of D. Yt over dt, except at the point when the set point changes. So the set point changes from, say from here the set point changes after this value, the set point becomes constant. So for this entire range, the rate of change of set point is zero, meaning that for this entire range, the error signal the derivative of the error is the negative of the derivative of the output signal. So if we use the derivative of the output instead of the derivative of the error signal, then there will be no kick. So you see that the typically the output signal is much more smooth. Okay. And the error signal is very large at the beginning. So instead of taking the derivative of the error, if you take the derivative of the output signal, there will be no kick at the beginning. So that's the solution to avoid the derivative kick. So use PID derivative on the measurement signal. Okay. So we see that the one problem with the derivative control is the derivative kick, which can be overcome by formulating in a different way. Okay. Now you see that for a loop pro simulation, we see here for this case. So for this part, we see a large control action because this derivative was taken on the error signal. Now for this part, for the same process, the derivative is taken on the output signal and you see there is no kick when there is a change in the set point, okay? Now mathematically, how do you show it? Is that simply DET over DT, it's nothing but this, the error signal is nothing but the difference between the reference signal and the current value. And if the reference signal is constant, it simply becomes d negative dyt over dt. Now, how the PID equation looks like. So in this case, ut becomes this two remains the same. Only for this case, instead of having d e over dt, we have negative. Remember this term here, negative dy over dt multiplied by this term for the controller, okay? So you see that by using the derivative on the measurement, we can get rid of the derivative kick. Another issue the derivative control is what is called is measurement noise. Typically, the output signal commonly have measurement noise. Now, if we take the derivative of the output, the measurement noise gets amplified. Because the typically the measurement noise is high frequency and that can really switch direction at every sample. And if that's the case, if you take the derivative of this noisy signal, the control action will be even more noisy. What it means for the final control element is that the valve will keep on opening or closing very fast and continuously. You can see it from this here that at this point, so you can see that this slope is here increasing at the next previous value slope was decreasing and then again decreasing, increasing. So what may happen that if you have this type of noise, the control action will keep on increasing and decreasing at every time instant, okay? If that's the case, we'll have the valve to be open very frequently. You can see for this case here in the simulation, so when the noise level is very high, in that case, valve can saturate very quickly and you can see that the, the valve can really move between the maximum and minimum and that's what is called this chattering problem in the controller. So for a very high noise, this can happen and that's very detrimental for this final control element. Now, how to get rid of this noise issue? 
Okay, one way to get rid of this noise issue is to add a filter. So you see that this is the filtered output and this is the noisy output. So filter output is can see in the, in the uh, naive sense or in the very simplistic format, you can think filter to be some sort of average, okay? So if you have a signal that's really moving very fast in the positive and negative direction, so if you really add say three, four samples together, you'll get an average value. However, the that may add some sort of dead time or increase the time constant of the process because you are taking an average value over few samples. Okay, so if so what filtering does is to rem remove the what is called this high frequency noise, meaning the noises those are really changing very faster. Okay, so we see that there are two problems. One is the kick that can be taken care of by taking the radio filter on the measurement. The second is that there is a noise issue. So if you take the radio filter of the noise signal that gets amplified, that in terms adds noise to the control action, which means that the valve needs to open and close continuously. And in that case, that can be overcome by using some sort of filter in the controller. Okay, now we see that that each of these three control elements, namely the PID, has their own function. We see that the proportional controller considers how far Y is from the set point at any current time. Okay, so P control is based on the what is called this present time. It's taking care of the present error. Okay, now integral control takes how long and how far Y has been from the set point meaning that integral control is based on the what is called this past. And then this the derivative control, it's considered how fast it is changing, meaning that it's looking at the future. So these three elements, one looks at the current time instant, the I control looks at the previous values, the D control look at the future, okay? Now we see that the limitations of the controller can be taken care of by using these three elements together. So the offset is eliminated by this integral action. This oscillatory behavior is reduced by the D action. So when there is an integral action, there is some, there may be some oscillation that's taken care of by the derivative action. We said that there are wind up issues with the derivative control. Now that can be taken care of as well by turning the integral action off when the valve saturate. Now the derivative control has the problem with the kick and which can be eliminated by taking the derivative on the output itself, okay? And the noise amplification problem can be taken care of by applying a filter, okay? So in summary, the proportional control has the disadvantage of having offset. Integral control has the disadvantage of being Oscill having oscillation and wind up, but the integral control can take care of the offset issue that's caused by the proportional control. Now, proportional control gives a large control action at the beginning when the set point changes. Now, the derivative control has a problem with the kick and it has also like the problem with the noise amplification, but it can reduce the oscillation that's caused by the integral control. Now, you see that this combining the proportional, integral, and derivative action together, we exploit the advantages of this three element. And that's why the PID controller is widely used in the industry.